Hey, Dr. Sia with you. So what is the TSH reflex on abnormal to free T4 test? <laughs> Your doctor may have ordered that, and this is one of the most common tests for screening thyroid disease. This video will help you understand the test, you know, what the results mean, and what treatment options you may need to consider based upon the results. So for starters, let's talk about what the TSH is. So this means thyroid stimulating hormone. And this is a hormone itself. It's one that comes from the pituitary and it tells your thyroid to work. Now, your thyroid is something to where it only works when it's told. <laughs> and it works more when it's yelled at and less when it's whispered to, okay? So the TSH can be a whisper or it can be a yell or it can be in between. And based on how loud it is, how high the TSH is, that's how much your thyroid is going to work. So your pituitary can adjust how much hormone the thyroid releases by controlling how much TSH it releases. And it's backward. Remember, if your thyroid is really underactive, it will get yelled at. If it's overactive, your pituitary will lower TSH as much as possible, trying to slow it. So when TSH is there, your thyroid works by making a hormone called T4. And that's like 80 to 90% of the hormone your thyroid makes. It's mostly T4, it's the first one that's produced. There's also some T3 that's released, but a lot of T3 comes from T4 in circulation. So the TSH to reflex test is basically looking to see first if your TSH is in the normal range. If your TSH is well below range, that's that whisper thing. That means your thyroid may be overactive. And if your TSH is way above range, that's the yelling part. That's where your, your thyroid might be badly underactive. Not always, but maybe. And same thing here, not always, but maybe. So the reflex means that if the TSH is abnormal, the lab will automatically measure the T4. It'll then measure how much T4 is present. So why not measure it anyway? You can, but this is mostly a matter of convenience and cost. If your TSH is normal, the odds of the T4 being way above range or way below range are exceedingly low. So it's not irrational to avoid that second test if it may not be necessary. But the reflex goes on to measure the T4. Now, if the TSH is high, will the T4 always be low? No, not necessarily. And what we call that is subclinical hypothyroidism. The TSH is high, the, the thyroid's getting held at, but it's working, it's keeping up, it's still making T4. And that's very different than what's called overt hypothyroidism. That's a case where the thyroid's getting yelled at, but it can't keep up. It's pretty well failed. And so that's a case to where there's, there's no thyroid hormone, or there's very little thyroid hormone. And in those situations, there can be benefit from thyroid medication. Now, on the other hand, when it's subclinical, when the thyroid is keeping up, then there's not really a need for replacing medication because the hormones are not lacking. The thyroid may be at risk to slow down, but it has not slowed down at present. And there's the same thing on the other side. So if the TSH is below range, the T4 might be normal or it might be elevated. If the T4 is normal, we call that subclinical hyperthyroidism. So there's a risk for hyper and there are some health risks but there's not an abundance or an excess of hormone being present. Or with overt hyperthyroidism, then there is. Then there's this lower signal to the thyroid and it's making way too much hormone. So what are the situations that warrant TSH with reflex testing? You know, for adults, it's actually good as just a routine screen. You know, anyone for a routine health screen, just like watching your blood sugar, your cholesterol, your blood pressure, some people are more at risk. As a generalization, those who have a family history of thyroid disease are more at risk. And that's true for any kind of thyroid disease in the family. Women are more at risk than men. Adults are way more at risk than children. In fact, the risks with children are pretty minimal. Adolescents have less than a one in 1,000 rate of developing thyroid disease. Whereas adults, it can be even 25% can develop some autoimmune thyroid markers. Then we think too about those who have symptoms. So if someone has symptoms of hypo, more common hypo symptoms, the weight gain, the hair loss, the fatigue, the depression, the menstrual irregularities, the constipation, or someone has symptoms of hyper, actually those same ones can also be hyper symptoms, but we think a lot about hyper when someone's heart rate is high. They may have palpitations. They may feel their heart bounding or beating really hard, or 
They're at rest, but their heart rate is what it would be if they were exercising very hard. So those are signs that one should screen for thyroid function. And then we think through it too about what are these normal ranges? What are the numbers that one would expect? So most labs consider between about 0.4 to four and a half, the low and the high end of the range for the TSH. So when the TSH is below that, one would then reflex for measuring T4. And when it's above that, one would measure for T4. Generally, the subclinical hypo can include TSH scores between yeah, four and a half and 10, maybe 15, maybe even 20. When it's way above 20, that's almost always present with overt hypothyroidism. That's the main difference there. And in those cases, if one does see overt hyper or overt hypo, it's then important to understand what's causing that. And then that's a the time of measuring thyroid autoimmunity. So T4 helps see how much hormone is coming out of the thyroid, but the autoimmune markers, such as the thyroid antibodies, help one know if there's an autoimmune disease. And the most common cause of hypothyroidism is Hashimoto's autoimmune disease. And the most common cause of hyperthyroidism is Graves' autoimmune thyroid disease. They're, they're most typical. So the reflex to test, the TSH to reflex test, is a very appropriate screen. If someone does have a high suspicion of thyroid disease, uh, really unexplained symptoms, a strong family history, it can be worth not doing the reflex test, but right out of the gate, also measuring for thyroid antibodies, for T4, and for T3 presumptively. And some may also have some localized symptoms. It's, it, uh, it hurts to swallow. You know, their, their voice has changed. They have an unusual lump they've noticed. And in those cases, it's also appropriate to check the structure of the thyroid. That's best done by a physical examination and a thyroid ultrasound. So there's times to where a full panel is more appropriate rather than just a portion of the tests or the reflex panel. But the reflex is an appropriate screen and many can need that. In terms of what these levels mean, there are other considerations such as one's age, uh, pregnancy status, and cardiovascular health. So they can take different readings and how one would interpret those scores. But the most important point is that one can identify thyroid disease through blood tests. And it does take a doctor who knows what tests to run, how to make sense of the tests, and when to think about things that may be normal but still problematic. So once one has discovered if thyroid's a culprit or not, the big message here is that natural things are the mainstays of therapy. You know, diet, lifestyle, and nutraceuticals, they help in almost all cases. Thyroid medicines are often not useful and pretty badly overused. That's an explanation of the TSH with reflex. You're measuring the TSH, going on to measure a T4 if that TSH level is abnormal. Hope that's helpful. Dr. C with you and take great care. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.